All right, guys. So we got just uh, five photos on this one. I narrowed it down to to edit. And so let's get started. First off, we got this sort of high key female uh, shoveler. And so I think crop wise, I mean, I'd love to just get rid of that entirely, but I don't know if that feels a little too tight up top. I think it does. And it's a little, I already shot it like a little tight on the left hand side there, but I don't know. I think I can get away with something like, oops, let's keep this actually set at the, the normal two, three. Um, yeah, I think I can get away with something like that. That feels pretty well balanced to me and it's going to be easy to just kind of wash that out up there anyway. So I'll start just by pushing the whites up. This is straight out of camera, so it's pretty damn close to where I want it. Um, yeah, we'll just push these whites up just a good bit there without just making sure we're not overexposing the bird. And I do want to leave this water line there. Just a little indication of where the water line is for me is always a nice thing. Um, just punch the shadows up just a little bit. That'll lighten our duck. And then I'll drop those blacks to get the contrast back on it. Hit the whole thing with a little saturation for some color. And then I'm just going to throw a linear gradient on right there. Wash out that top completely. And then I'll do the same thing down here with the bottom. Just I'm going pure white on these. That's just the look I'm going for. There we go. That's pretty much it. Um, I think I'll just take it into Photoshop just to do a little bit of contrast on the back end of the bird there. There we go. That looks pretty good in some areas. So I just dropped the black point on that. We'll get rid of that effect everywhere. Go ahead and paint it in back here, a little bit on the head, and then maybe just a little bit on the bill. Not too much on the bill though. I don't want to darken that too much. And I do think maybe the bill could use just a little bit, even the head too, a little bit of just regular contrast, which lightens up the highlights as well. And I'm pretty damn happy there. I mean, maybe I'll just kind of run that contrast right across there. And we'll just, like I said before, make sure I leave that white line there. And then we're good to go. So there's our before and after on that one. Let's get that closed and saved. And then we'll move right on to the next one. I'll just let that happen in the background and we'll jump over to this next photo here. So first things first on this one, definitely needs some crop. I'm pretty sure I shot a little crooked, not as bad as I thought. This side uh, with this duck over here is just a bit too much. So make sure I lock that aspect ratio. I don't understand why Lightroom does this anyway. If I go into the next crop now, it's unlocked. So I have to lock it, don't touch the crop, then go to the next photo and then it stays locked. It's just weird. I don't know how to get it to kind of stay that way. That's the only way I figured out how to do it. So anyway, I like the mountain back here. That's part of what I wanted to kind of include. And I do like the colors and just the trio there. The back bird is definitely a little bit out of focus. Front bird's the sharpest, and then it kind of gradually fades off. But in the full view, it's sharp enough. So I think I want to lean into that sort of warm golden tone just a little bit more. And then maybe just the shadows is where I'll just tint them back to blue. I'm going to, I don't know if I want to lift. I don't know if I want to see any more in the bird. I think I actually want to leave it dark. So I'm going to go shadows down and drop the blacks a little bit. And then as a whole, I'm going to lighten up the, uh, the tone curve here just to get, I'm looking for a little bit more punch right in here. Uh, I will then throw a linear up here, darken that down just a little bit to get that sky a little bit richer. And then I think the last move for me on this one is going to be, let's see if I can do some with color grading here in the shadows just to get a little bit more of that bluish purple in the, like the mountain and just some of those darker shadowed areas. Maybe even the mid-tones could take a little bit of that. Yeah, there we go. I'm basically looking to tint this cloud, the mountain, and then some of the water here, but not this side because I want the highlights, like the lighter areas to kind of stick with that orangey sort of color. So let's see before after all right so i went too kind of um reddish with that tint so before after before after yeah i think that kind of heads in the direction i want so that's good all right so i'm happy here in uh, lightroom let's go into photoshop and i think i'm just going to clean up some of these background ducks a little bit so just a, a blank layer i'm just going to use the regular old clone tool here to just kind of softly blend those out I just do personally find them a bit distracting back there. And so we'll just kind of smooth those out. They're so out of focus. They're not even a duck shape anymore. And so they're just like these weird smudges that I just 
found kind of distracting. And so there we go. I think burn wise, I could just kind of darken this side of the mountain just a little bit to try and even things up tonal, like tonality wise. Uh, that's not the right word. Just even out the tones. That's a better way of saying it. <laughs> All right, there we go. And then I don't want to use my preset burn because that tends to desaturate things a little bit. So I'm going to do another curves adjustment layer, hit that corner up there, and then this side a little bit over here. And now I think I'm just going to go with some hue and saturation, punch it up real nice, but then just paint that in where I want it. So a little bit more color in these just orangey spots is really all I'm looking for in that circumstance. I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of detail on those ducks. So let's take the black point down on those. That should allow them to just go pretty much of a full silhouette without affecting the background, like the water around it. And so there we go. So there's before, after. Looks clean. I like the colors. They're nice and vivid. So we'll go ahead and save and close that one. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that as a whole, especially as a finished thing. I was a little unsure in the beginning just because I knew how far, not how far I had to go with it, but there was like, it needed some cleanup, you know, like the raw file there, especially if we look at the original on that is definitely, yeah, just leave something to be desired, but that's really clean. I like that. All right. On to the next one. This silhouette's going to be really easy. Um, it was mostly silhouettes that evening just because of the light I was shooting into it which I was all for, and the water was tough, as you saw in the shoot, if you've already watched that. Second duck back there has got to go, or uh, Grebe, I should say. Um, let's get a little bit more out of this, though. So this is, like, exactly where I wanted to expose this, because watch what happens. When I lift up the exposure, I start to lose detail there. See how it's starting to get white washed out? But check it out. If I just do some highlight recovery, it's all there. Now, that was a little bit too much for below, and, in fact, actually down here... I really don't need much at all, just about there, because I want to keep that bright. So I'll throw a radial in up here and then hit that with a highlight reduction to get that detail back. And again, it all comes back because I started so dark with my exposure. Now I'll lift the shadows up. That's going to give me a little bit more, you know, kind of reading over in this side. Uh, and then I'll just drop the blacks a little just to make sure I don't wash out anything. Crop wise, yeah, the level looks good there. I don't think there's anything else to do compositionally i do however want to get these these two ducks and then whatever the heck that is kind of smearing down there and maybe i just i want to leave this a little bit more bright and prominent so just up here i'm just going to reduce highlights on that just to tone that sky down a little bit and just keep the the viewer's eye hopefully down there a little bit more so into photoshop we go it's something i could probably remove in lightroom and get away with it but I just know I can do it faster and easier and with a little bit more control here in Photoshop. So there we go. Um, I just love how the cloning just blends. It's just so smooth. And especially with the, the graphics tablet and the opacity, I'm just going to soften up this little bit over here as well. Just kind of those dark areas there were just kind of blotchy and uh, something with that weird vertical line in the cloud there. I mean, that's looking good to me, you know, like just that cleanup. See that just kind of gets rid of all that extra stuff. Now it's always good to turn on the before and after because I can see I sort of made a, a bit more of a defined line there than it than was there. So there now I kind of smooth that out. All right. So we're done on that one. Save and close it again. I got nice detail here. Nothing is overexposed. I still have yellows in the brightest areas there. And that sky completely came back because it was there when I shot it. Um, and I shot it at low ISO so I could push that file wherever I wanted. So there we go. There's the final on that. And uh, let's move right on to the next one. All right. Man, I really nailed these just so straight. <laughs> Again, I exposed just to, to just get the highlights exposed properly there. Because I can do a lot more with the file afterwards. So just put a linear up there. Richen that sky up a little bit. Maybe a radial down here to sort of go the opposite direction. Punch that up just a little bit. Maybe even a little exposure lift there. Get those blacks back down. Um, I think that's about it on this one. Maybe, you know what, this, this could maybe use just a little bit of additional warmth. Yeah, and then maybe a little magenta up there. It was like the color was starting to fade. And then this side, there's a little bit of a color fade there as well. So 
I'll throw some of that warmth and magenta back in there just to keep things that nice, rich, vivid orange. Um, now that I look at it, this one little dark spot of wave coming in there on that side doesn't need to be there. So I'll clip that out. And then there we go. Nice scenic um, silhouette. I'll go into Photoshop just again to clean off this little smudgy edge of whatever that is. I don't know what it's coming from. There must be like an object back there because it's pretty consistent. Uh, boy, this would look so much better if it was just flat, glassy, calm water instead of all these waves. Uh, these darker, more dominant ones, I'm just going to sort of give a little bit of cloning just to kind of soften them up so they're just less eye-catching. Uh, but what I don't want to do is get rid of them entirely because it would just look weird. And it gets into, uh, on the on the verge of being too much of an edit for me, where it's just kind of softening that stuff out. It just keeps your eye from going there. And now we got this nice grebe just really standing out. So there we go. That's it for that one. We got one more photo, I think. And let's check that out. Let's see. Yeah, this guy. So we'll check that out. Digging the composition on this one. I don't feel like I have to change it at all. It actually looks like, for a change, I shot level. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let me to see that photo. So I don't think I have anything to crop there. Now, I'm going to lean into the purple a little bit more here. That, that bluish and kind of shift towards the purple just a bit. Listen, I, I feel like I see this a lot. Somebody would be like, that? Uh-uh. That's too much. Like, this color didn't exist down there, you know? But I feel like going from, watch, from there to there pretty subtle even actually you know a little bit too much even for my taste there but just going that little bit right from there to there gets you a little bit more there give the whole thing a little bit of saturation the top i can lean into the pink a little bit more so it's like warm and magenta so i'm just hitting that a little bit extra with a, a linear gradient maybe a little dehaze on it just to get it more defined and then i think down here is where i need to sort of get things to stand out more so a linear for just the bottom half, I'll subtract another linear off the bottom there. So I kind of isolate that middle section where the duck is. And I'm just going to lighten it up a bit and then hammer those shadows back down, bring the highlights, the whites back up. I'm just looking to create more contrast in that band there to help make that duck stand out a little bit more. Uh, maybe went a little bit too high with this one. So I'll bring that down there. And then the last thing is I think I want to lose detail in this shoreline there. I think. I don't know. We'll see. So I at least want to lose some contrast in it. So I'll isolate that out. Going to definitely dehaze and then darken it. So let's see if it looks better darker. Hmm. I don't know. It just doesn't look good at all. <laughs> it, it would look better not there is the key. Uh, so I'm just trying to see, maybe desaturate a little. That helped, I think. The lesser contrast from negative dehaze is good, but I think I just want to leave it kind of neutral mid-tone there. But that seems better before, after. It's less contrasty. Uh, you know what? Maybe if I cool it off. There we go. That helps it blend in a little bit. And again, I'll just desaturate it just to somewhere in there. So I think before, after, that's definitely less dominant and eye-catching now, which is exactly what I wanted. And so I think that's pretty good. I'll go into Photoshop now and finish some tweaking on that. It does look like I have maybe a yep, dust spot there. So we'll get rid of that. And then these couple of spots, they might be some other birds back there. We'll just kind of smooth that out. Um, uh, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to do a burn layer right on the duck here, this nice looking shoveler. And then I just want to darken. I just want it to basically be a silhouette. It's so small in frame. Any detail on the bird isn't really helping or giving away like the species or anything like that. And so it's just all about the shape. And so I want a nice dark shape there. And so that's what I'll paint in. There we go. Now we got that nice dark silhouette. Uh, I'm going to try another hit of contrast right through this mid, mid section here. Stuttering a little bit there as I said that. Um, and then, boy, I don't know what else. It's kind of cool. I like that. I mean, it's a beautiful scene. It's such a shame about this. If it was just like the mountains coming down into the water off in the distance there, uh, that would be nice. It would be so much better without that thing there. But that was what that location was. There was only so much I could do. And I do really like these colors. They're just so beautiful. The sky was intense that night. And so I wanted to show it off in some way, you know, so that's the best way I could come up with. So let's close and save that. We'll take one quick last look at everything that we edited from this set. And 
there's some creative shots there, you know, four silhouettes. I got one non silhouette out of the whole set, but it was, it was just tough shooting that day. It really was. So I'm really happy with these as a set for the conditions. And at least I got to show off some of that really cool sky. And then the dusk sky that happened after that. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as always learn something from it.